Moses, what are you doing at four o'clock today? Plans. Switzy, what are you doing at four o'clock today? Game. Where's our big guy, Nard? What are you doing at four o'clock? Dressing a game. Right. <laughs> Guys, jump into this moment, hey? Turn the energy up now. Let's make sure we're ready to go for puck drop. It's about this group right here. First five, next five, next five, and we go. Red Hawks on three, make it loud. One, two, three. Yes! Their name has helped define the sport of collegiate hockey at the highest level. Their identity can be found in a single word, the brotherhood. It's all about hard work, okay, let's go. A storied program annually listed among the elite, driven not only by their past success, but by the expectations placed upon them. Game time! It's in the bag, you better believe it. We all play for one reason. Show out dominating this season, it's time. Take that dub with us, so we leaving. You not with us in the streets, and brave, I turn it up for the season. Game time! It's the season 2018 Miami Hockey. It's been said that life is 10% what happens to you. 90% how you react. This choice of reaction was squarely in front of the Miami Red Hawks as they gathered the morning after their first taste of adversity. A tough loss to Providence. We go D to D, our defenseman has to take their ice. Look at all the open options you have if you take your ice. It's not automatic that you go to the stretch guy. They're sitting on it. But if you challenge this guy, he's got to make a decision. Watch all the options, but we don't even look. For Coach Blasey, these early season moments are stepping stones that prepare his team for bigger challenges ahead. You're a Division I hockey player. Comes with responsibility, fellas. You're a Division I hockey player at Miami University, playing in the best league in the country. That comes with responsibility. Look at the guy next to you and a guy across from you right now. Go ahead, look at him. Those are the guys you play for. You're letting them down when you don't prepare well. You're letting them down when you don't communicate on the ice. You're letting them down when you take a dumb penalty, when you turn the puck over because there's no play there. You're letting that guy down. You guys understand what I'm saying? There's gonna be a lot of bad things that happen, bad bounces, things like that. We cannot react and go down because we hit a little bit of adversity. It's a constant reminder of our culture and why you're here. Um, we're a family, we help each other out to be successful, and you have to focus on all aspects of why we're here. And our job is to remind them of that. We want to be a family away from the rink, no doubt about it, but we want to be a family on the ice as well. And being a family on the ice means you play the right way, you play in our structure, you execute. The team game is beautiful, uh, but the team game is flawed because it's played by human beings. And when human beings are tested, human beings are challenged. Um, sometimes we don't react real well, and that's where we have to come back to who we are, our identity. Today you got another opportunity. You got an opportunity to go three and one after four games, and you got to be excited about that. And we got to be ready to go because Mercyhurst, they're fast, tenacious, but. If we play in our structure, get pucks behind them, and execute our game plan, we'll win. That's your focus as you go on a little walk here with your coach. Taking in feedback and embracing the positive is a familiar dance that all successful competitors must learn. And with the learning accomplished, it was time for the Red Hawks to turn the page. And perhaps that's why a 15-minute recovery walk in the brisk, eerie air led by performance coach Ben Eves, is just what the team needed to clear their heads for the next challenge ahead. A time to reset, refocus, and hopefully rise. He gets the puck off so quick, and then it's just like boom, right in the back of the net. I like Matthews, just so entertaining to watch, and so creative with the puck, like a Marner too, just seeing what they do with it, you know, so creative. I just really I look up to those guys a lot, just so skilled, yet they work so hard. Upstairs, freshman Jonathan Gruden was spending his time the way he always does, further becoming a student of the game. Just going through YouTube, watching 
any hockey videos, just I don't know, passing he, time up. He hasn't stopped watching hockey videos. He seriously, he we came back to the uh, to the room after the game, and he immediately put on the Michigan NDP game, and then and then Wisco BC. He's literally nonstop. He's, He's nonstop. Student of the game. That's all. It is a passion that his roommate, <laughs> senior transfer River Rimsha, knows will pay off in the long run. With Grudes, especially being a young guy, you know, he's a true freshman. I was a true freshman, and it's a big learning curve. Um, you, the speed is a lot, guys are stronger, it's faster. So you just gotta rely on your strengths, know what you're good at, and, and just, and honestly, you gotta go out there and not think about the game, you just gotta go have fun. At the end of the day, if you're having fun, you're gonna, it's because you're working hard and, and good things are happening. Across the hall, senior captains Grant Hutton and Josh Melnick are equally as excited to get back on the ice. You know, the games are so important and, you know, one game can make or break a season, you know, when it comes down to pairwise at the end of the year. So, you know, it's just trying to get that message across that, you know, every shift's important. Every time you get on the ice, you got to capitalize and you have to be ready to play. For the pair, they know that moments like this will define who this team will become. Sometimes it, it's just like tough to like let those games go because obviously, like you said, the this, this season's so short. But um, you know we got to be ready to go for tonight. Tonight's a it's a new day. It's a good opportunity for us to just come back and and respond. That's the biggest thing. So tonight's opponent is Mercyhurst, a physical team that took Notre Dame to overtime the night before. We've got to win battles if we're going to have. The coaches lay out the challenge in a film session before heading to the rink. So this morning was all about learning from what we did yesterday and moving forward. Now we start focusing on what we need to do today, right? Okay, so Mercyhurst, um, if you look at your scouting report, they're gonna get after you. They're honest players. They're gonna be in your face, all right? And they're a counter team. They wait, they sit. If you turn the puck over, they counter on you quickly. And that's when their speed and their skill starts to take over. This is. This is a team that won 24 games last year, won their league championship. This is a confident, very good team. We've got to be ready. Meanwhile at the arena, game day brings a different sense of anticipation for the voice of the Red Hawks. We were just a, a, a top five team all the time, you know, and, and a lot of times number one in the country. So it was something that we just came to expect and we got so used to that after a little while you, you didn't think anything of it. And then all of a sudden when you know things got a little bit tougher and it wasn't there, you really truly realize how hard it is to get to the top. Greg Waddell is now in his second decade calling Miami hockey games and has a unique perspective as to the evolution of the brotherhood. You know what, ironically, uh, for me, the brotherhood, you hear the name, you hear the title of it, and, and it's true, Rico really inspires the whole brotherhood and, and everybody involved top to bottom. It, it, it's really been a family affair. He has seen many teams come together and in the bowels of the arena, spends a few minutes with Coach like Blasi previewing the contest. How important is that here in the early going to, to see all those new pieces of the puzzle? Well, I think everybody's played now with the exception of maybe one or two. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's still a work in progress. We're trying to figure out everything that, uh, that's going on here in terms of lines and chemistry. And it may change a few more times before the end of October. but. Uh, now is the time to do it, and um, you still have to finish the process. And, and finishing the process means playing good team defense and finishing your your, your uh, assignment. Or offensively, you got to you got to finish around the net. Hey, let's be positive tonight. Not everything's going to go our way. We stick together and pull your brother along. Let's play some hockey. Hawks on three. One, two, three. Oh. There you go, boys. And when the puck drops, the Red Hawks waste little time asserting themselves. Go, 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 go! Karch Bogman intercepts a feed the blue line. Comes down the other way, he shoots it, scores! Yeah! Karch Bogman! And he went right down Main Street and put that one by Cantali on the first shot for Miami. 29 seconds in, they take a 1 0 lead. Kiss on A5. Bachman's first minute goal was a physical manifestation of the Red Hawks' focus, something they look to continue the rest of the first period. Change! Course three! Course three! Come here, come here. As a dump pass given off to Hutton as he fires it in, the horn sounds to get us to the first intermission. Okay, fellas, we've got to get our ice back. If it pucks on this side, we have got to take the middle away. 
let them go up the wall. Then our D will take that and we'll track back. If they go D to D, then the first guy reroutes, this guy gets over here, this guy has to cut the ice so they don't go middle. So we gotta do a good job in the neutral zone, okay? If you don't have a play, all right, shoot it on net. Don't go backwards. That's what they want. If you can't drive them inside out, chip, put it in the corner, rip it on net, we got guys going harder than that. That's what our plan is. Watch your changes this period. Let's get back to work, let's go. Back to the blue line, held in, firing a shot, Larkin made to save and took a little glance behind him. In the second, the Red Hawks look to keep the pressure off. Soroki's line, Soroki's line. Answering the call was senior Ryan Soroki. Soroki, fresh off the bench for a change, carries behind the net. He lost it, he picks it back up, he comes around, he wraps it around, and he scores! Ryan Soroki to increase the Miami lead to 2-0. And with a five-minute major assessed to the Lakers, they look to put the game away for good. Red Hawks have a 25-11 shots on goal advantage, but only 2-0 lead. And while the flurry didn't amount to a goal, an opportune moment late in the period was all sophomore Phil Nyes needed. Phil Nice knocks a pass away. He comes in now, shorthanded. Phil Nice sends a shot in. He scores! Shorthanded goal. Phil Nice, as he did it all in one, stole it away, and was able to get up ice and put it by the goaltender Cantali for a shorthanded goal to increase the Miami lead to 3 0. As the Red Hawks, a 21 shot night by Mercyhurst, get Ryan Larkin. The shutout, his second of the season, fourth of his career, and hold on to win the consolation game here at the icebreaker by a final score of three to nothing. Uh, Phil, change momentum of the game, man. Yeah! yeah. 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 Okay, great job on special teams. Our PK came through big. Shark, a way to kick him. Real good by everybody. We are starting to understand that when you have a lead like that in the third period, you got to manage the game, right? It's not about necessarily gaining offense, but puck possession and game management. We're starting to learn that. This is a great bounce back game for us. It's huge, right? Three and one in four games, pretty good. Now we got four at home. We split on the road, we sing songs at home. All right, great job, that's it. Let's get out of here. For the Miami Red Hawks, the 3-0 victory was more than just another win. It was evidence of their evolution as a team. That the adversity of the past would not affect this year's edition of the Red and White. And as they prepared to leave Erie and the Icebreaker Tournament with their heads held high, perhaps it's a fitting time to close this chapter of the season. For what began in the dog days of August, fueled by intensity and desire, projected onto lifting and skating, was a single question around a single concept. What would this brotherhood represent? And after trials both on and off the ice, from their initial tests home and now on the road, one thing has become clear. This brotherhood represents heart, unity, and hopefully at the end of a long road ahead, a championship.